Now, I'm sure you've heard all your favorite content creators go on about this is the best form of farm in the game, but guys, it's no joke. Operation Plaguestar has returned once again, and with it comes the fastest guaranteed way to earn fully built formers to stockpile over the next two weeks. So my advice, you'll want to jump into this and grab as many as you can, but the challenge is not burning out. So friendly advice to you guys here, don't overdo yourself. Even if you muster up 20 formers, it's better than nothing. And for those who don't know about Operation Playstar, kick back, relax, give me a minute and let me explain. As always guys, timestamps added to the video. All right, firstly, let's walk you through the steps and what to expect if you've no clue what's going on. Step one. Head to Cetus on Earth and talk to Konzu. Hopefully he's off his lunch break. And from here, you'll be able to select between three different Plague Star bounties. The difference between them is how much standing you get as a reward and also the difficulty in enemies. Bounty two and three also will have a boss fight at the end, unlike Bounty one. So if you're new to Warframe or new to Plague Star and you want a bit of a trial tester, queue up the first bounty. The second and third bounties require two components to even queue up the mission. Now these components are the item and Phylaxis, which can be found over at Nakak's store for 2,000 Plague Star standing, and the Infested Catalyst, which can be found within your clan dojo inside the Infested Lab. Now, both of these are blueprints, and by purchasing, you unlock their crafts within your foundry, and you'll want to be crafting quite a couple of these before you start doing your grind, so get on that. Now, they used to work differently in the past. You had to go in and equip them inside your gear wheels, but guys, you no longer have to do this. So, so long as you've got them built, and they're within your inventory, you are good to queue up Bounty 2 and 3. So for now, let's queue up a bounty and walk you through the rest of the steps. Step two, when entering the plains of Eidolon, you'll be directed to a random cave location. And by heading deep inside the cave, you'll be on the lookout for a circle area, which contains a device holding a toxic catalyst cell in which you want to go to walk up to, interact with, and pull out of the machine. Step three, now that you have the toxin cell from here, leave the cave you just entered. And when you're back outside, a new direction will guide you to a random grenier camp somewhat nearby. So head over to that camp and there will be a big storage truck which has a button on the back. Interact with it, open up the truck and inside you'll see an armored vault console to insert your toxin mixture into. Now it is to note that if you queued up bounty two and three, this is where you'll be using those idle on phylaxis and infested catalysts, both going into the mixture with the toxin cell and it will only consume one of each out of your inventory. However, if you queued up the first bounty, then don't worry, insert the mixture and worry about that later. Now that it's mixing, get defending. This is a typical three minute defense mission and I won't lie to you with the amount of runs that you'll do here, this is probably gonna be the most boring part. Even on steel path, which is too strong and enemies don't stand a chance. So melt them down and pop something nice to enjoy on your second monitor or your phone in the meantime to help you bypass that time. Step four, sweet as your mixture is done. Up next, you'll be directed to an area in which you'll want to find a downed drone. And when found, the person who has the mixture in their hand will need to insert it into the drone to get it up and head to your last objective. Now, this is a pretty straightforward step. Just walk alongside the drone and guide it, killing enemies that try to take it out. Also, you will go and gain some bonus standing if the drone is left above 80% health without dipping underneath it. So try not to ignore it until it reaches the infested boil. Give it that guidance. Step five, the infested boil is angry and it will spit out infested enemies, which slowly build up over time. From here, all you need to go and do is purge the meter percent it's shown to you on the left hand side of your screen by repelling the infested and killing them. Now, if you queue up the first bounty, you'll want to go ahead and get this straight to 100% just by killing the enemies. And then you're basically done. You can leave the planes with your standing rewards. However, if you queued up bounties two and three, then as you're purging enemies, a hemocyte boss will spawn. Now, this boss is identical to the boss on Deimos named Lephantis. So, if you need a refresher on how to kill this thing, walk up to one of the three sides and make it attack you. As it opens up for an attack, it exposes its weak point. Shoot the pink fleshy areas until that side is dead and do the same again for all three faces and sides until the hemocyte is dead. So depending on which bounty you queued up, depends on how many of these hemocytes that you have to fight during this bounty. The steel path version has up to four of them, progressively getting stronger each time you go ahead and kill them. And with all operations, do remember, if you care for clan trophies, whenever a boss dies, it drops an infested sister lift, I think I'm saying that correctly, in which you'll be needing if you want to go and build some shiny trophies inside your dojo, showing it off to all bypassers who join. Lovely stuff, guys. Your dojo looks great. Good job, you. Step six. 
As you've now completed your bounty and purged back the infested, head back to Cetus and talk to the trader Nakak to access his store and rewards. Now, he doesn't have an awful lot of rewards here, but some of these are more specific only to this area and to this event. So to put this simply, up on the screen is the stuff that I personally recommend you get before the event disappears for another year or however long it takes. And if you already have all of these things, then awesome. Spend whatever standing you want on fully fresh built formers. And speaking of formers, let's go over why this is the best former farm. To give you an example of how good this farm actually is, let's say on average with a decent-ish team doing steel path bounties, if you can muster up getting the bounty completed within 10 minutes, here's some math on the screen for you to enjoy. And sure, 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 there are variables, I get it, but for the most part, depending on your speed and the efficiency and the lack of sleep, there could be a madman out there who farms over 2,000 former in this event alone. Mind you, they probably wouldn't play for the rest of the year, but it's the thought that counts. That could mean one former every 10 minutes, which in my opinion is absolutely nuts when we're talking builds and investment down the line. So set yourself a healthy goal, say even if it's like 20 up to 100, and when the next update comes out with brand new weapons, Happens, don't weep you've got the investment enjoy the new stuff at this price lovely jubbly all right all right but what warframes are good for this i'm glad that you asked me this let me share with you some cheeky tips and builds that i use and feel free to swap whatever you need due to either your availability or your play style so up first is my mesa i would use her for dps clearing during phases especially in phase four it's nice to have someone solely focusing ad clearing be it a warframe or even a necromech it helps not getting those pesky toxin status procs or being overwhelmed by ads and keep in mind especially in public Public groups, the coordination isn't always there, so having a DPS frame would actually come in handy. Other DPS frames to recommend would be the likes of Saren, Jaya, Calervo, Mirage, Octavia, or hell by all means Excalibur, but grab whatever you can, and if you're there to deal damage, then deal damage and get working. You're pretty much modern all your builds for strength and duration or strength and range, depending on which Warframe scales with what, but that's the basic gist going to help you understand your rough builds. Another thing here is to use your Helminth if you have it unlocked and ready to go. Abilities that can boost either weapon damage or ability damage are just too good to not infuse into the damage dealer builds. Abilities such as Mirage's Eclipse, Rhino's Roar, or even Zaku's Sata's Whisper will all increase damage output, so pop them in if you can, it combos well with all of the strength that you're taking anyways. Now damage dealers are after a few extra things that could help them, so here is some more information to stack into that role. Weapons. Now up on screen is my Pyrana Prime that I've been using. It hits extremely well, whether it be on ads or even the boss itself. And you'll be seeing a lot of this weapon throughout the Plague Star event. It's kind of the old reliable at this point. Other weapons could include the likes of Incarnans such as Burst and Prime, which also has great magazine size and ultimately dumps damage like no tomorrow. So let these builds be examples of other weapon modifications for you to aim for. Ideally, damage, multi-shot, critical, and fire rate are kind of your basic go-tos. And depending on whether the Hemocyte armor is stripped or not, you would either want to go Radiation for its armor or Corrosive for its health when armor stripped. So it depends on whether or not your team is armor stripping. So for focus schools, a school like Madurai works perfectly in synergy to what a damage dealer wants. Just pop yourself on that school and use its features such as Sling Strength for extra strength to your next ability class or even Void Strike to help pump out more weapon damage on the Hemocyte boss phase. Either way, Madurai is great for the DPSs to sit on. Now, as for companions, I personally keep it simple and select between two mostly. Now, this is personal preference, but the Adaza Kavat with its cat eye mod helps weapon critical chance increase, which overall helps your damage output. Or for a cheeky bit of protection, you can use Worm Prime for its negation to status effects such as Toxin. Both are good to go and sit on, but again, everyone likes different choices here, so I'm not going to go too deep into this. And since we're still on the DPSs, I'll put up quickly my Necromech build if you are interested and if you have one available, because honestly, this covers basically the DPS role alone. So even if you're taking a support frame instead and you still absolutely want to shred, the Necromech fits in well here. They are gross for ad clearing. Do keep in mind, sitting in a mech could give you an AFK timer. So please try to move once every so often, like 30 seconds or so, so the game doesn't think that you're leeching. Just a heads up, because it has happened to a few of our players. So also, I'm going to go and pop 
pop on the screen my Titania build as well. She's a good source for step two, which was mentioned earlier in the video, to get the mixture. But also her Dex Pixie, a secondary weapon, deals fantastic damage to the Hemocyte. She's a reliable boss killer, so if you're looking for some damage to help out with bosses because your team is slacking the damage then i can recommend her for a good choice to help your team out now for step four people are selected between three different warframes mostly to help move the drone nova vault or loki and the reason for these frames is because they all have different ways to either speed or teleport the drone However, after playing all three, my review is to only stick to two of these. I recommend Vault for his speed movement whenever he uses a second ability to make the drone absolutely whiz over the terrain and get to the boil faster. This is a safer method to take because there's less interruptions with coding due to the speed and the movement of the drone. Although there is still a thing as being too fast as we've learned with Helminth configuration. So use those at your caution, but also a great meme. Otherwise, Nova works great. She can line up in front of the drone and place a wormhole guiding and teleporting the drone through it with her third ability, helping it bypass quite a jump to go and get to the boil quicker as well. Now, she can still have some hiccups here, but nowhere near as bad as the final recommendation, Loki. Okay, guys, I do like Loki. As his teleport goes over 200 meters away, he works fantastically to those who understand the height drop elevation. But if you don't, let me explain real quick. You see, Loki requires line of sight to switch teleport himself and the drone, which is understandable. But the planes are rocky and hilly, so this means you just jump up and then TP, right? Unfortunately not. See, the drone can't land within like five meters or so and touch the ground. So if there isn't anything for it to go and fall onto, the drone resets to the original cast place. This means Loki switches with the drone only for the drone to insta teleport back to leave Loki in the place looking like a lemon. So yes, guys, you can take Loki, but it's crazy to say this, but there is actually a bit of skill and practice required to go ahead and take him here. Have an awareness of your surroundings will help Loki teleport better and not paying attention means that you're only but slowing this stage down for the rest of your team. So that means going back, I recommend Nova or Vault for this stage as they're both a bit more reliable. Even though they still have hiccups, it's not you. I swear, guys, guys, it's the drone. It's the drone. Now, Nova is one of the two Warframes I absolutely recommend. Her fourth ability, Molecular, can speed up the animation of the Hemocyte leaving the boil. So this will go ahead and get to you fighting it quicker. Yeah, guys, it literally saves time. So taking a build like this would give you an idea on what you're aiming for. This is a hybrid mix between high duration and low strength for her fourth, for the movement speed to the Hemocyte, and high range to help her with the wormhole teleports for the drone to move through. Covering two roles with just one Warframe, it makes her so good for Operation Plague Star content. And finally, the second Warframe that I recommend is Wisp. Her first ability, Reservoirs, give us a big increase to our health but also give us a big fiery increase to our weapons now this pairs fantastically not only for ad clearing weapon but also for pinging down those bosses her moats even work on necromex making them shoot a lot faster too so she's just too good to not take here especially against an infested faction where toxin bypasses our shields and hits our health directly their health boost is fantastic she helps our damage dealers significantly and they don't have to take survival within their builds now just one thing to go and recommend guys at least one player in my opinion should have a dispensary in the group this ability comes subsumable with the helmet from the warframe protea and when deployed drops health orbs universal ammo and energy orbs this is just too good not to take it's unlimited everything so i tried to go and ask one person in the group if they can bring this every time it works really well with nova and with wisp kits so if they can go and get them go ahead and subsume it chuck it into your build Alrighty then, I think I've mentioned the main things that I wanted to. Operation Plague Star doesn't come by that often, and yes, it's absolutely fantastic for farming out farmers, so do get going, guys. But again, I echo. It is a burnout event. Do not kill your joy for investments that you may never see because you're too burnt to play further. Trust me, past me remembers. So present me right here is telling you right now that it wasn't worth it. Thanks for watching today's video. Leave some support with a cheeky like. Or if this video helped you or you know it would help someone else, then share the video with a friend. If you're new to the channel, come subscribe. But as always, guys, I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.